now joined by Francisco de Borja Lacheras. He's an associate director and policy fellow at the European Council on Foreign Relations. Well, thanks very much for, for joining the show. I mean, this is being billed as Spain's biggest crisis for generations. Where do you think things stand? Well, it is indeed uh, the biggest crisis we've had probably since the failed coup d'etat uh, when I was born in February 1981. Um, I'm, I think, on the one hand, we need to bear in mind, as you've seen, uh, the parliament that voted for independence was semi-empty. And that means the, uh, the Catalan opposition boycotted the decision because not for independence. And uh, the party ruling Barcelona, Catalonia Sique Spot, uh, is also in principle against independence, so they voted no. So we're seeing a repetition of the events that took place a month and a half ago with the majority, wafer thin majority uh, for secession uh, rammed through the so called disconnection laws. But yeah, in the short term, we're going for a gradual um, application of Article 155. That it's not the suspension of autonomy that I'm hearing sometimes in the media, but it is indeed a restricted autonomy. The Generalitat, the executive body remains, but their political leaders will probably be dismissed. The question is how. And the parliament in Catalonia remains, but it cannot pass acts against the, the constitution. So so this is this will be very tricky because we in principle we also have a proposal for constitutional reform that, that the Spanish Parliament broached to agree to discuss a few weeks ago. But in the short term, we're heading for, for escalation, and I'm afraid things, things will get worse before they get better. Do you think that Madrid's plan is, is to stall events by introducing, I suppose, more bureaucracy um, to, to slow down and make their campaign lose momentum? Well, I think uh, what uh, I mean, what Rajoy has been saying in that regard, he's uh, he's stuck to his word. Okay. Um, I'm afraid I have to interrupt you there because um, Emmanuel Rajoy has started speaking. Let's listen in and hear what he has to say. Que algunas personas pretendan liquidar nuestra constitución, nuestras normas de convivencia y las reglas de juego que han servido para que en 40 años España se convirtiera en uno de los países más democráticos y más. For Spain to be one of the most democratic countries in the world, the state is going to react. It has this, the empowerment of the parliament, and please be sure that we, be, we will behave according to the circumstances. OK, I'm going to bring, bring you back in there, um, and apologies there for interrupting your flow. Um, yes, we were talking about what Manuel Rajoy, who was just saying there that Spain is one of the most democratic countries and they've got the empowerment of parliament behind them, they're going to behave accordingly. Do you think the plan is to really slow down the momentum of the independence process in Catalonia with lots of extra bureaucracy? Well, I wouldn't say extra bureaucracy, but I think it is important to, to, to highlight that independence doesn't have a majority support in Catalonia. It does have a majority of seats uh, in, in Parliament that we see today, 70 out of 135, which is slightly over 50 percent in terms of parliamentary representation. So this will further divide Catalonia. Barcelona is run by a party that is opposed to to independence, and that's the irony. So I don't think it, Rajoy will resort to, to bureaucracy, but we, they will take measures to 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 suspend, if you will, the political leaders of the of the Catalan government. Meanwhile, the Spanish judiciary will also take measures. So, like I said, I don't see it's just a question of bureaucracy, but it's, an, it's the question is how do we reestablish consensus in in Catalonia first and foremost. What do you think the, the best case scenario would be? Because, of course, Catalon Catalonia wants to remain part of the European Union, but the EU um, have said that, well, if they, if they secede from Spain, then they're, they're out um, of the EU. Um, how do you see negotiations moving forward? 
Well, like I said, uh, it, and I said going back to, to my previous words, that regardless of the crowds that you'll see today in Barcelona, um, Catalonia is a population of over uh, 7 million inhabitants, two out of which are clearly in favor of independence now. So uh, this will be a very fragmented process and we'll probably see two legalities at this stage. Part of Catalonia abiding by the Statute of Autonomy and the Spanish Constitution, and part of Catalonia, including the majority in Parliament, trying to go forward with a different uh, constitution. So it's really looking very bad, because if they go for so-called constituent elections, I don't see the other parties taking part. And that's so you'll have a uh, uh, then pay list tailored for, for half of Catalonia. And of course, the EU will not recognize this. and. The, the leaders of the EU have already yes. made that that claim. So it, it will not, independence as wanted by the secession leaders will not happen. So big questions then about the uh, how free, how fair it is if the majority ruling party is not even taking part in those votes. Well, Francesco de Borja Lacheras, Associate Director and Policy Fellow at the European Council on Foreign Relations, thank you very much for your insights.